Hi everybody and welcome to this uh, second uh, tutorial on creating grids in Photoshop. If you remember in the first tutorial I'd been asked by um, a member of one of the Flickr groups that I use uh, how we could create a grid over an image and uh, that's exactly what we did but it was a one-off grid and I've subsequently been asked by another member of the group how we can create a reusable grid. Well, without any further fuss, let's uh, see how it's done. Okay, there are two ways basically that we can create the grid. We can create a black uh, background with a white grid or a black grid on a white background and these can be used in conjunction with the uh, blending modes in the layers palette to bring the image through from underneath. Or we can basically create a grid, remove its um, its uh, infill in the uh, different segments um, so that it can be placed uh, over the image and uh, basically moved over any image to be used. And that can be any colour. Now the reason that the, um, <clears throat> the only the black or the white grids can be used with the blending modes is because any other colour um, used with the blending modes will be altered. The colour itself will be altered um, and the opacity of that colour will be, that grid will be altered. So it can be used for effect. Um, it's something you can play around with but um, basically um, for black and white grids it's, uh, it's ideal. Okay, so let's have a, let's have a look then <coughs> what we're going to do. Right, now then, um, <coughs> what we need to do first off then is to create a background um, to place the grid upon. As you can see on the screen now, I've got the, um, the poppy fields uh, shot that I took um, not far from Shruton Village in Wiltshire a while back. And uh, on top of that, we need to create a blank layer, either a white if we're going to use a black grid or black if we're going to use a white grid. So uh, we'll assume that we're going to uh, use a black grid over the image, so we need to create a white background. So you've most probably seen from the first tutorial how we create the grid. I'll just run quickly through it. Okay, so we need to have white as the foreground color and creating a new layer, just fill that layer with white. Okay, then we need to switch the foreground color to black and basically using the rectangular marquee tool um, we made a selection if you remember over each of the segments and then used the stroke key to place in the start of the grid and we continue this all the way over the image it's going to go back to the open state <coughs> and then what we end up with basically is something like that okay so having made the grid <coughs> how do we use it okay so at this stage we would save that grid as a jpeg file and it's handy um, if when you're naming the file if you look at the, uh, the the file name at the top of the screen i've named it black grid on white and then in capitals i put multiply now multiply is the blending mode that we need to use to bring that image through from underneath this grid. Okay, so it's just a, a handy reminder to place that name in part of the uh, the file that, that word multiplying part of the file name, and that'll help you uh, in the future identify the blend mode and remind you about the blend mode you have to use to bring the image through from underneath. Of course, what we have to do first is we have to place this on top of the uh, the image. So we need to drag just drag it down off the uh, off the file bar there. And now selecting the move tool <coughs> and while holding down the shift key, press and hold down the shift key and then hold down the left mouse key and drag it across and when it's on top of the other image, when you see the plus symbol come, release the left mouse and then release the shift key. Okay, so then I'm going to minimize that, get that out of the way. And now you can see we've got the, <coughs> the grid placed on top of the image there. Right. So I'm just going to remove the, uh, the guidelines. <coughs> okay, so with that done now, it's just simply a matter of changing the blending mode to multiply, and there we go. We have the uh, the image come through from underneath. So that's uh, a way of, of making a grid. You can make up the grids in however many numbers you want, um, whatever 
<coughs> design you want. I've gone for a thicker border here to give it a more sort of uh, a windowy sort of artistic feel, but you can go for the same size all round if you wish, or thinner or wider. It's really up to you. And just a reminder, the way that we set up the grid to get the spacings, we go to Edit, Preferences, uh, Guides, Grid and Slices, and then in the Grid section of the menu, we put 100% for grid lines and subdivisions 4, and that gives us the 4x4 four four, um, grid that we have on the screen now at the moment. Of course, you could set this for whatever... Um, you want and, and have as many grids or as few grids as you want <coughs> and uh, if you were to put three in there you'd have the uh, the three by three giving nine which is basically like the rule of thirds so there we go okay so let's just cancel that come out of that <coughs> right then so um, where do we go from here so the principle is the same for the white grid um, and I have one done up here on the screen there we go so we have the white grid on the black background, and the same principle, we're just going to move that on top of the image, holding the shift key down, and releasing. And then basically for this one, instead of using the uh, uh, multiply, we're going to use screen. So screen will take away the, uh, the black, and then we have a white grid over the image. <coughs> okay. So the other type then, Obviously, uh, if we want to make a grid of a different colour, um, we can use a slightly different method, and uh, we'll go do that now. So I'll just uh, get rid of the, uh, the grid over right there. <coughs> okay, so what we need to do then um, to select and to make a grid of uh, any colour we choose, first of all, I'm going to put up a new layer. <coughs> And we can fill, we can make this um, background whatever colour we want because uh, we will eventually take that, uh, remove the background segments anyway. Okay, so I'm going to say call it black. So I'll fill with black. Now I'm going to select the colour picker and <coughs> say for this image we wanted um, a bluish grid. Oh, there we go, sort of something with a little bit of magenta. We we'll just just pick any colour for now, just to. Uh, there we go, okay. So we're going to pick a, a purple. You know, I tell you what, we'll pick something that we can see more readily as I'm uh, as I'm working on it here. So a little bit more to the yellow. There we are, we'll just go for a, a yellow grid. Okay. So I'm going to bring up the, the, the grid lines onto the screen. <coughs> Same principle as before. And just uh, create the grid, edit, stroke, and for the uh, that's what I'm going to do 40 so okay 40 and again yep again edit stroke and just building up the the segments just selecting each other there we go edit that's one of the verticals and then we'll just do the horizontals Control and D to deselect and Control and um, inverted comma to remove the grid. So there we go. So now you can see <coughs> we've got a yellow grid with a black background. And to turn this now into a, a reusable grid, what we're going to do is we're going to select the um, the magic wand tool. <coughs> and up in the, the, the toolbar at the top of the screen, if we select the second one in, which is the uh, Add to Selection. Okay, so the first one is Selection, second one is Add to Selection, and then the third one then is the uh, Remove from Selection. So it's Add to Selection, and basically we need to click inside each of the uh, rectangular black areas. So that's all selected now, as you can see the marching ants are marching away quite nicely. And then simply on the keyboard, place, press, sorry, press backspace, 
and that removes the background the image comes through from underneath okay so we go control and D <coughs> and then that um, removes the marching ants and takes the selection away right so to convert this now into a reusable image mask we need to ditch the background so it's going to drag the background down to the, uh, the trash bin there <clears throat> and you can see now what we're left with is the yellow grid and the checkered area tells us that there are no pixels in this area so that's just a clear grid now that we can save and then we can bring in to use on other images if we wish so how do we do that right okay so what we need to do now is we need to file save as and we need to uh, obviously rename it so we go to yellow grid and we need to save this as a PSD a Photoshop PSD file and the reason we need to save it as a PSD file is that is the only way that um, Photoshop will recognize and keep this as a clear background grid image if we save it as JPEG Photoshop will fill those background areas with white again and you'll be wondering what went wrong so save it as a PSD file okay so they have that saves as a PSD file <coughs> right so that's basically the two methods of making the uh, the, the grids but we can take it uh, we can take it a step further okay so just just, just going to quickly take this a little step further and uh, I just bring the yellow grid back out again and I'm going to move the yellow grid oopsie move tool control and D right move the grid over the image using the shift key just close that down <coughs> okay so we can make this into um, a sort of view from my window sort of uh, image is going to go to edit just going to free transform just to bring these sides in a little bit because the image is cropped a little bit smaller than the grid okay there we are and I'm going to actually make the um, <coughs> commit that I'm going to make the um, border a little bit wider so I'm going to go to edit stroke and knock that one up to uh, 100 uh, so we get a nice wide border there we go I'm going to remove the marching ants and I'm going to change the foreground color to a brown color okay there we go <coughs> and I'm going to fill the frame with brown this is just to show you what we can do okay and then I'm going to go to the FX and I'm going to go to bevel and emboss and we're going to give this frame a little bit of a wood look so we're going to go in a bevel chisel hard up depth we're just going to move the depth along there you can see the uh, the effect of the window coming in now the size and bring the size up a wee bit there okay so we're getting a nice sort of window effect there now I'm going to say OK to that and then I'm going to create another layer I'm going to go select all control and A I'm going to get my color picker again and then go for a darker brown okay and then I'm going to put a stroke on that stroke and I'm going to make that stroke about 60 there we go and select OK nice dark stroke and on that also I'm just going to put uh, let's remove the uh, marching ants and again I'm going to put a little bit of bevel and emboss on that and again oops again chisel hard a bit of depth and a little bit of size okay so there we go and there we have a uh, looking out of my window type frame uh, view so you can see you can do all sorts with the uh, with the frame overlays as well okay so I hope you found this useful and enjoyed watching as much as I enjoyed doing it so I'll say bye for now